Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I've got another tricky question for you today. And this one is I've got some trig and it's got some integration. Perfect. Two of the trickiest topics in the whole A level. And talking of integration, if you want to help the channel, help me, and also help yourself, then consider signing up to my Life of Vision session on Sunday, all about integration. I'm going to teach you everything I know about integration. And like I say, it helps out the channel and also will help you out. Okay, let's get into this one. So using the formula for sine A plus B and the relevant double angle formulae, find an identity for sine 3x, giving your answer in the form. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna derive, um, I'm not, well, I'm gonna derive the double angle formulas is what I'm gonna do, um, because um, sine A plus B is in your formula book, but the double angle formulas are not. But it does say we need to use sine A plus B. And sine A plus B is sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. So again, that's in your formula book. Um, and we're going to need to use that. Uh, but we're also going to need to use the double angle formula. So let me uh, uh, derive the double angle formula. So this will be sine of 2x, which is the same as sine of x plus x. So, all we need to do now is just replace the A and the B, to replace the A's uh, with an X, and we need to replace the B's also uh, with an X. So this gives us uh, sine X cos X plus sine X cos X, which is of course two lots of sine X cos X. So there's your double angle formula for sine. I recommend learning that. You don't want to be deriving that in an exam. Um, now, I do know in advance that in order to do this, we will need the double angle formula for cos as well. So let me just derive that one. Uh, so cos A plus B. Again, this is given in your formula booklet, this compound angle formula, which is cos A sine A minus, tell a lie, <laughs> it's not that, it's cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. That's exactly what it is. Uh, so if we wanted to find cos 2x, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say that this is going to be cos of x plus x, um, which is equal to, again, just replacing the a's and b's, both with x's, it's going to be cos squared x minus sine squared x. Now the beautiful thing about cos 2x is that you can swap out the cos squared for a sine squared, or sorry, cos squared for 1 minus sine squared, or you can swap out the sine squared for 1 minus cos squared. In doing so, you get two new formulas for cos 2x. So one of them would be 2 cos squared x minus 1, and the other one will be 1 minus 2 sine squared minus 1. Again, I'll leave that for you to do. Just swap out the cos squareds uh, for 1 minus sine squared or vice versa. Okay, great. So we've got our double angle formulas sorted. Um, let me just tidy this all up. Okay, so I've got everything nice and neat, everything that we need for this question to begin. Okay, so sine of 3x is what we've been asked to prove. And we're going to use this compound angle formula. Um, we're going to write sine of 2x plus 1x. And that means that we're going to use um, <clears throat> the a's will be 2x and the b's will be 1x. So we can write um, sine a, where a is 2x, so sine 2x, cos b, will be just cos of 1x plus sine b will be sine of 1x and cos a will be cos of 2x. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, and now we need to just use the correct double angle formulas. So um, for sine 2x here, we're going to use, well, sine 2x only has one um, way of writing it. So it will be 2 sine x cos x and then times by this cos x as well don't forget that like so okay um, next 
we're going to, oh, we can write this as cos squared, of course, uh, because we've got a cos uh, times by a cos. Okay, lovely. Just write that out a bit neater. There we go. Next, we've got sine x, and we're going to multiply this by 2 uh, cos x. Now, having a cheeky look over here, I can see that um, my expression needs to be only in terms of sine. So which of the three of these do you think I'm going to use to sub in for cos 2x? You get it right? It's going to be this one, the one that involves sine only. So let's substitute that one in, like so. Okay, uh, we've got a pesky cos squared here, which we don't want, but as we know, the sort of fundamental identity for trigonometry is that uh, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, so therefore we can swap out the cos squared x for a 1 minus sine squared x. So let's do that then. So we have two lots of sine x, open brackets, 1 minus sine x squared x um, and then we might as well multiply this out uh, so sine times 1 is just sine so sine x times 1 is just uh, sine x and then sine x times minus 2 sine squared x will be minus 2 sine cubed x like so okay great uh, next line multiply this bracket out so this gives us 2 sine x minus 2 sine cubed x and then we've still got this plus sine x and this minus 2 sine cubed x and then collecting like terms we've got 2 sine x and a 1 sine x that makes 3 sine x, sine x and then we've got minus 2 and a minus 2 makes minus 4 sine cubed x Perfect. It says P and Q are constants to be determined, so I'd always just finish it off by saying P is equal to 3, comma, Q is equal to minus 4. Um, and that looks good. Thank you very much. Take those marks and we move. Okay, part B. Um, so, uh, we are integrating between pi over 2 and pi over 6. Um, um, sine 3x here which we know is 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x and then we're going to multiply that by cos x and then that is dx okay so just replacing this sine 3x with the identity which we proved in the first part okay so let's just write this out again but now let's expand out the brackets so we get 3 sine x cos x minus 4 sine cubed x cos x dx. Like so. Okay, so we've got two things to integrate here. Um, and we've got the blue bit uh, and we've got the, uh, the green bit. Now, in fact, I'm going to write them in different forms in order to make it easier for us to integrate. So first off, the blue one, that is very similar to the double angle for sine. In fact, we've already proved this. Uh, so sine 2x, we said, was 2 sine x cos x. Um, so if I just multiply this through by 1.5 or 3 over 2, uh, we get 3 over 2 sine 2x is equal to 3 sine x cos x. Uh, and that's perfect. So that can be just substituted straight in there for the blue part. Um, and that gives us uh, 3 over 2 sine 2x. Now, I've already spotted that we're going to need to use the reverse chain rule for the green part. Um, and in order just to show that a little bit clear, clearer, I'll write it like this. Uh, so I've not actually done anything to it, but I've just written it in a, uh, in a clearer form. Okay, um, well, in fact, I'll, yeah, I'll integrate the, uh, the, the first one here. So, um, in order to integrate uh, sine, um, we go to minus cos. Uh, the way I think about it is we have sine, cos, minus sine, minus cos, and we differentiate down, and we integrate up. So, because we're at the top of the ladder there at sine, 
When we integrate, we almost go all the way back around to minus cos like that. Now this is a sine 2x, so we have to be careful because the input is not just a regular x. So what we do is we have to divide by the derivative of the input, and the derivative of 2x is 2, so we have to divide by 2. So when we divide by 2, this will change to 3 over 4, and we've got a minus because it's minus cos 2x. So that is that integrated. Now, the tricky part, the reverse chain rule. Well, um, I've spotted it's the reverse chain rule because we have x here, and we have a function, um, which is to sine that x, and then we have a second function, which is to cube that. Now, if we have a situation like this, a function of a function, and the original or the first function that you need to apply, if the derivative of that is multiplied by that double function, then we can use the reverse chain rule. I know it sounds complicated. Let's see it in action. Okay, so, um, and in a situation like this, we guess and we say let y equal... Um, the first function of x is to sine x, and then we're going to take the second function, but we're going to integrate that. And if you have uh, the function to cube, well, to integrate that means you need to up the power to a power 4. So this is going to be our guess, and we're going to use the chain rule to check to see if this works. Okay, so... Um, how do I use the chain rule? Well, I would do a little substitution. I'd say y is equal to u to the 4, where u is equal to sine x. I would then differentiate this with respect to u, which gives me 4u cubed. And I'll differentiate this with respect to um, x, which gives me cos x. So therefore, dy by dx is equal to dy by du times du by dx, so these two multiply together. So it's 4u cubed cos x. And we can swap out that u cubed as well, uh, because we know that u is equal to sine x, as it says here. So that's sine x cubed cos x. And bingo, bango, bongo, that is a direct hit, because this is exactly what we're looking for right here on the nose perfect so what does that mean well i've taken this and i differentiated it and i got that and because the derivative is the anti sorry the the integral is the anti-derivative then if i differentiate something and get something then when i integrate that it should get me back to what i originally differentiated so therefore if I integrate this red box, I get what my guess was, which was sine to the power 4x. So I buy minus, because that minus is still there, and this is sine to the 4x. And that is integrated, and that is pi over 2, and that is pi over 6. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now all that's left to do is just finish off by substituting in our limits. Um, so we're going to have minus 3 over 4 cos of uh, pi over 2, uh, times 2 is just uh, pi, and then minus sine of pi over 2 to the power 4, so that's the first bracket, um, and then the next bracket will be minus 3 over 4 cos of pi over 3, uh, actually I have to double the input because it's cos 2x, and then minus sine uh, pi over 6, and that needs to be raised to the power 4. Okay, so this gives um, cos of pi is minus 1, so that's 3 over 4. Uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so to the power 4 is still 1. Um, cos of pi over 3 is a half, so this is minus 3 over 8. And sine of pi over 6 is a half, and then to the power of 4 is a sixteenth. Okay, so let's simplify each of these. So the first one will be minus a quarter, 
and then the next one will be minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7 over 16. Um, so final answer will be um, minus 4 plus 7 is 3. So 3 over 16 is our final answer. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know at some points I did you know, over explain, take a bit of time, but I felt like it's a tricky question, so I'd want to give as much information and, and um, <clears throat> an insight as possible. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, consider signing up to my live session. Bye for now.